Hi guys, welcome back to Top Speed Golf. I got a great game for you. It's really fun. We're going to play the high-low game. So we're going to see how high we can hit the golf ball, how low we can hit the golf ball. And this is fantastic to really get that perfect trajectory for your shots. So a lot of you out there may be hitting a little too high or a little too low, and you haven't really found that distance that gives you, or that, that height that gives you the most distance. So playing this game, hitting them as high, as low as you can, not only are you going to get control of your club face, you're going to control the loft through impact, but you're also going to be able to get, be able to adapt whenever things get a little bit off. So you go out there, you make a few swings, the ball's going too high, floating up into the wind, you're losing some distance, you're going to know exactly what to do to bring that ball flight back down. Let's go and get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to do here, I'm going to start out with my six iron. I got my flight scope behind me, and it's going to track a couple of shots to find just my normal height. So here on the screen, I'm going to track three things. Vertical launch, so that's the, whenever I make contact with this ball, what is the angle that it leaves the face? Is it leaving very low? Is it leaving very high? It's going to tell me that in degrees. It's going to tell me my maximum height, and it's also going to tell me my dynamic loft. Now what that means is dynamic loft is different than the static loft on the club. So whenever you take out a, an iron, let's use a pitching wedge for example, 45 degrees on a pitching wedge, most sets out there. So that's the loft that's on the club when I'm setting it down on the ground. That's the angle of the face as it sets up naturally. Well, when I make contact, I want to get some forward shaft lean, and I'm taking loft off of this. So whatever the loft is, when I actually compress the golf ball, when I hit the golf ball, that's the dynamic loft, or the loft that I'm actually using when I hit the golf ball. So for a pitching wedge and a PJ Tour player, you, most PJ Tour players, just on average, kind of give you a ballpark, are going to de-loft the club about 30%, 33% of whatever the static loft or the normal loft is. So a 45 degree pitching wedge, is going to be down to about a 30 degree loft, dynamic loft at, at contact. And if you swing a little slower, you may not want to de-loft it quite that much, but I find that most people do not de-loft the club enough to really compress it. So let's start out here. I'm going to make a normal six iron swing, and let's just see what my normal numbers are, my height, my vertical launch, and my dynamic loft. Let's give it a try. There we go, nice solid shot. Fairly high, I'd say that's maybe just a little bit higher than normal, but I hit it pretty clean. Let's see what the flight scope tells me my numbers are. So a vertical launch of 15.1. So again, the, the club, loft that's on the club at impact, is going to determine what's, the dynamic loft is going to determine what this launch is at. The ball is going to launch about 75% of my dynamic loft. So my, my loft on this club naturally is probably around 6 iron, I think around 32 degrees, I'd have to look it up. I'm probably hitting with around 21 degrees or something like that of actual loft at contact. Or sorry, excuse me, it says it there, 17.4. I'm not even looking at the screen here. So I'm hitting with 17.4 degrees of dynamic loft, 15.1 vertical launch, and my max height there was 106 feet. So that's as high as the ball went. So now let's try to see how high we can get one. So I'm gonna do a couple things different when I wanna hit a high one. Number one, if this is my normal setup, I'm going to play that ball just a little bit up in my stance. So if this is my normal ball position, I'm going to play that about a ball forward. So this front ball instead of my normal back ball there. So I'm just going to move it about an inch forward. Number two, if this is my normal stance width, I'm going to go ahead and go a little bit wider with my back foot. Now what this is going to do is going to drop me back. We talk about this a lot in our top speed golf system. What is our compression line? How is this angled away? Well, as I drop my right foot back, that's going to give me a compression line that's tilted farther away, and now it's easier to come in level to this ball to hit a little bit higher. Now, as I come in a normal shot, we go over this a lot when we talk about the move in our top speed golf system. We're flattening out the bow in the left wrist, and we're actually de-lofting this club. We saw that I only used 17 degrees loft, so I really compressed the heck out of that golf ball. And then when we're trying to hit it high, I want to add some more loft to that. I like to have my dynamic loft a little higher. So instead of having this logo forward, I'm going to have the logo a little bit more up to the sky. So now my logo is coming up. Probably not the best thing for you guys that already tend to hit it high, don't get as good a compression, but we're going to see just how high we can go with this drill. So number one, ball a little forward. Number two, I'm going to drop that right foot back a little bit. And number three, I'm going to feel like the logo of that glove gets going up toward the sky. Let's go ahead and try to hit another one and see just how high we can go. There we go, that one was a mile in the air, way up there, pretty straight. 
So our dynamic loft was 18 degrees. Our max height was 137. So I picked up a lot more height there. I wouldn't be surprised if it got my dynamic loft a little bit off there. I bet it's a little bit higher than that because I really got that ball to go a lot higher. Another, let's see from the first one, 106. I got another 31 feet in total height there. And our vertical launch went from 15.1 to 15.7. So a lot of that too is I'm getting a little bit extra spin on the ball. Uh, but I, couldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if it's just a couple degrees off on that reading. Sometimes it can get a little bit of ground interaction, not get the perfect reading. But the overall, the idea there, we could definitely see that work. Picked up another 30 feet of height. Wider stance, logo of the glove coming more up toward the sky and putting that ball a little bit farther forward. Now, if we're gonna go low, we're gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna take this ball, and if this is my normal stance again, off the logo of my, my shirt or my left ear, I'm gonna put that ball back about an inch. I'm gonna take my stance and put it a little bit more narrow, and I'm gonna keep my weight on my left side here a little bit. So I'm not going to get way behind the ball. I'm going to come in left side. Now my compression line is very vertical. Not the best for getting overall compression and maximum distance, but for hitting that low stinger shot, this is really going to help you. And then lastly, as I'm coming down, I want my logo of my glove to really be down to the ground. Look how I've taken all the loft off that face when I do that. And another key here, I want my hips to go ahead and open up. If I keep my hips closed, that club, I have no way to get to the ball and I end up having to flip the club to reach the ball. I want those hips to rotate on open so that I can get this forward shaft lean and get this left wrist really bowing. So number one, ball a little bit back. Number two, stance a little bit narrower. Number three, I'm gonna favor my left side here, a little bit more weight on my left. And then finally, I'm gonna keep my hips moving and get this left wrist really bowing forward so I can get that nice low penetrating shot. Let's go ahead and try that one out. And you may want to open up your stance just a slight bit since we're hitting down more. That's going to help you hit a little bit straighter. Let's give it a whirl. There we go, much lower. Again, right down the middle. So that one really knuckled through the wind. Let's see what the flight scope tells me on that one. 12 degrees vertical launch, so we brought that down a few degrees. Dynamic loft was only 15 on that one, so we really brought that down, and then the height was 90 feet. So on my low one, 90 feet. On my middle one, my normal stock shot, 106 feet. And then on my high one, 136 feet. So we really brought the spread, and I want you guys to try that out. Go back and forth, take an entire bucket of range balls, and see how low you can get. Now there I went kind of normal shots, normal distance. See if you can get one to go 10 feet off the ground. See if you can get one to go so high that it goes half the distance because it's just going straight up in the air. See what you can really do as you learn to control these heights, you're learning to control the club. And if you can control the club, you can play fantastic golf. All right guys, hope you all really enjoyed this video. If you did, I got a fantastic bonus video for you, an entire bonus series. Now all the pros out there, the longest hitters in the world, they're getting a lot of lag and they're releasing that lag to generate club head speed. I got a video that's gonna show you your number one lag mistake, one of the most common ones that I see you're gonna get instant access to that when you click the link that pops up on your screen for those of you that are on a desktop device. For those of you that are on a mobile phone, a tablet, an Android, go ahead and click the iCard up on your screen or down below in the description and you'll get instant access to that video plus five videos for my top speed golf system which are gonna go over the five most important pieces of the swing to get power, to get accuracy, and to start beating the heck out of your friends. So good luck to you guys and I'll see you all in a lag video. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see. And in this drill what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, look at Tiger Woods. All these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second 
in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be.